Hello, ladies and gentle dudes. I'm coming to you by postcard. How's it doing? Um, anyway, <coughs> I'm sharing a very interesting book I'm reading. I can't put it down. <coughs> I'm almost halfway through it. It doesn't have page numbers, so I don't know what page I'm on. But it's about yay thick, so uh, I'm about halfway into it. Anyway, the book is supposedly written by the guy who supposedly replaced Paul McCartney in 1966. I'm going to research it more, but so far it seems very convincing. So I have to go dig deeper on into the rabbit hole. Whoops, my hat's on sideways here. Okay, so but anyway, this guy, Billy, Billy's Back. It's called Billy's Back. It is actually encoded by Thomas E. Er Harriet. I can't pronounce his name but he calls himself the encoder not the author so the it's actually selections from the book that set world records whatever that means it says world record here but it doesn't say what world record uh, it's the mem the memoir of Billy Shears so he took out some of the chapters because it's a lot longer book and he he, he goes through the chapters I, I'll tell you which ones I've read and a little bit about them I'm gonna go more deeply into this and I'm gonna reread it again and I'm gonna do some uh, thorough study of this because if this is not one of the coolest uh, conspiracy theory books I've ever seen it it's up there with uh, with them so the first first chapter is called dreams of Paul so it talks about uh Paul McCartney had a bunch of dreams I guess I don't know exact when but before he supposedly died on September 11th uh, <laughs> I keep fucking with my hat it's like a green braid now anyway uh, he had dreams about he was going to die. So he kept telling everyone he needs a replacement because he's going to die. And he was telling his family and everyone. And finally, he even had a lookalike contest. And all the people that did the lookalike contest, he didn't really like. But then they found this guy who was named Pepper. Billy Pepper. Otherwise known as Billy Shears. Otherwise known as Billy uh, Shepard. And he was in a band. He was in many bands. And his stage name in the band was Billy Pepper and the Pepper Pots. And so the song, Sergeant Pepper's, he was also nicknamed Sergeant Pepper. And so in the, in the song, Sergeant Pepper, which is right after supposedly the next album after the Revolver, which the Revolver, the reason they called it Revolver is they were revolving from what they called the second stage in this, what they call in this book anyway, the second stage of the Beatles into the third stage, which was when they replaced Paul McCartney with this guy. So, anyway, that's the first chapter is about the dreams he has about he's going to die. And then the next one is, what is it? Stuart was the first martyr. It talks about their first drummer, Stuart, or Stu, who uh, died of a brain hemorrhage right after he left the Beatles, uh, right before they got really famous. And they, they had another drummer, and then the management of the first record they made said they didn't like that drummer, so they they put in a Ringo okay um, the next chapter is called Paul worked it out Paul's girls is the fourth chapter and then dr drive my car backwards um, I'm not gonna go into each chapter totally thoroughly the one that they left out is chapter 6 let it be and and he kinda hints to why he let it left it out and it's gonna be you have to actually go to reading the memoirs of Billy Shear to find that chapter but the cool thing about this version of the of the memoirs is each page has encodings uh, which in the supposedly in the real memoir of Billy Shears it doesn't have them highlighted so you can't really see and he he finds them so as as for an example here throughout the book there's all these other messages you can't see with this light on it's too bright that's why okay that's too, too way too bright okay let's try to go down a little you can't see oh you can a little bit here so throughout the book he has all these little highlighted parts where if you read down it actually gives a totally different message or uh, a subcurrent message to the actual chapter which kind of contradicts a lot of what it said to kind of give you like are you sure you know what, what he's really saying so for example this one it says from Needing Linda, I used the driving image to see my severe loneliness driving me sad, but the entire song is on driving in the rain. Then, of course, 
there is a car with a babe who has passed away. So he's talking about songs that he wrote in the peppercorn days and then songs he wrote later under the name McCartney. And he he has similar lyrics in a lot of these ones and similar messages. So it would be kind of a weird coincidence that a guy who uh, who wasn't in the band, supposedly, and then became in the uh, and he says he was became part of the band. Can you guys read it better like that? Yeah, when I put the light away. No, it's too bright. Okay, anyway, I'll bring the light back down. Whoa, very bright. Okay, so anyway, uh, there's so much it goes so deep. I'm gonna have to make more videos of this and more explanation of each chapter. But uh, let me just try to go by memory. Um, he's talking about the song. So many, baby, if you drive my car. Yes, I'm going to be a star, baby. I love you. Um, actually, there's so many songs that they reference in here and the lyrics to what they really meant and what you thought they meant. And if you go back and listen to some of the lyrics, they actually overdub the actual words that they wanted. But the first time they ever put lyrics on an album was a Beatles album called Sgt. Pepper, where they explained why Paul died and how he died. But it was they didn't want to put it out there because they wanted to subconsciously put it out there just because they didn't want to say they ever lied about it. Um, according to the author of this book, whoever that is, if it's really Billy Shears or, or it's something else, I don't know. But anyway, um, okay, so let's go into some of the, the songs. It talks about the whole, let's see some of the other chapters, if I can kind of, that'll kind of just naming the chapter will kind of remind me some of the things I read because I read, read it very fast. And I want to go back and read this again because it's a really good book. Okay, so one of the, uh, where's the chapters? Okay, here we are. Burn a poor young country boy. So this guy who became Paul McCartney in 66, according to this book, uh, was a country boy. He wasn't from Liverpool. He had to fake the Liverpool accent. But he was in many bands where he always used f names, fake names. So Billy Shears actually isn't his real name, but that was his name in one of the bands that he was before he became part of the Beatles. So he used that in the Sgt. Pepper to talk about who he is. Um, but he doesn't say yet who he is, and so far what I've got to. He says, I'm a shepherd. Yes. And shepherd, if you take out two letters, spells shears. Uh, spells shear. What's a shear? A shepherd uses a shear to, cup, to uh, trim the hair on a ram. And his, supposedly one of his solo albums, I haven't researched so much on Paul McCartney after leaving the Beatles. I wasn't that much into his stuff. I should get more into it after reading this. But anyway, or the new Paul McCartney. Some people call him Paul McCartney. Some people call him uh, other names. Because if you notice, a lot of people noticed from 66, the last Revolver album that the real Paul McCartney was on, and supposedly the new Paul McCartney, the new Paul McCartney's face was long. The old Paul McCartney's face was very round, like a kind of like a, a Charlie Brown almost. Um, also, I haven't got fully into the bass part because Paul McCartney played the bass left-handed. This guy apparently learned how to play left-handed. He was also a drummer. He was also he played some other brass instruments. He he re arranged orchestra stuff. He was much more uh, amazing musician, but he wasn't really famous than Paul McCartney was, which is why he t was able to take, according to this author, the Beatles into a totally new revolution with the album right after supposedly the Paul real Paul McCartney died, which is the uh, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. And the reason they call it Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. And on the uh, cover, he, he gives about a hundred different reasons why the cover was exactly the way it was. It was actually supposed to be a funeral for, for, for Paul McCartney. And uh, there's, there's messages in there. If you take a mirror and you put a mirror up to the album at a certain part of the, the drum head, I haven't done it yet, it's supposed to give you the date exactly when he died, which um, in the British way of writing dates, it says 11-9. 1966 but it also 
some people thought that was November 9th, but it's not. In the British, it's 9-11, just like the um, false flag operation date. Okay, and he ties a lot of the stuff that's going on in America with what was going on with the Beatles. That MK Ultra was using the Beatles to promote LSD. And uh, it's really very interesting. Um, let me see if I... Okay, so on the cover, supposedly when you put a a mirror there, I haven't done it yet, and I, I don't have the album. I, I have to go print it out, and then I have to do it with the mirror and everything. He said you can do it with the CD case now with an actual CD that reflects, because their CD reflects, but that wasn't... You had to do it with a mirror back in the days. And I guess you put it halfway through the drum, and then it makes the... It says I, or one in Roman noodles, one, I, X, which is uh, nine. The I, one is 11. Uh, one of them spelled out one, and one of them the Roman numeral one. And then it says he, and it has a pointer, and it points right to the new Paul McCartney. Die. So he dies. And also, he says this, this message was also in 1 and 1 and 1 is 3. Got to be good looking because he's so hard to see. So almost all these lyrics relate to the fact that Paul McCartney is not Paul McCartney. And it has to be, you have to be really good looking to notice his face is much longer. And why does he say one and one and one is three? That's John Lennon's lyrics. And get, uh, I forget the name of the song. One and one and one is three. Got to be good looking. It's so hard to see. Come together. Come together. Okay, I couldn't think of the name. But anyways, and come together. He's saying one and one and one is three. What that means is there's only really three Beatles, and this other guy, who was the almost lookalike, much more talented much better songwriter but wasn't yet famous until he became part of the Beatles and he also made his other acts that he was doing at the same time become more famous because he had a lot more money to put into them after he was inherited much of a the wealth of Paul McCartney so he says the reason why they did this is because at this time I mean if you look at the Beatles they were so handled by their handlers um, and they were the British invasion was used to to really push a lot of stuff around the world with the Beatles fame against really them knowing about what was being done most of the time um, this new guy who came in Billy Shears or Billy Shepard or Will, Willie Slick Willie whatever you want to call him but that's not his those are all of his stage names who became the new Paul McCartney he was much more organized in in working with the band to create really what they needed to create but he was never into the drugs as much as uh, the other ones so he kind of helped them get out of the drug scene because he knew that they were being controlled by by dark forces to promote uh, Haight Ashbury in uh, San Francisco as a place where the, the CIA used the funneling of these drugs to the to control that tried to control the teenagers and they also hired a, f a convict uh, Manson which they haven't yet got into that on this book I think it goes into this because it goes a lot into these dark secrets that whether this tr this story is actually true or not he says I write it as a novel and he says the reason I write it as a novel because I haven't died yet and I have to it can't be fully revealed until I die the current Paul McCartney uh, but he says some things here which I'll just try to find the quotes that I underline that are really good Okay, he says, all of the enormous negative consequences for me breaking the non-disclosure agreement are worse than ridiculous. Without going into it, there is no way I would possibly break this, that agreement. That is exactly why I am cautious to preserve the novel status of this revealing book. In fiction, such as a song, poem, and novel... I can say anything that does not violate the agreement, but in straight communications such as in an interview or on a witness stand, I am obliged to be silent about having any knowledge of Paul's death. So he says the reason he wrote this as a novel is because he he has he's under a disclosure agreement when he joined the band that he can't disclose all this agreement. So basically, Paul, according to the 
the point of view of this book, Paul believed he was going to die, so he found a replacement. And he believed that when he died, because he was having all these prophetic dreams, that he would be able to channel to this new writer and still be part of the band and still have his legacy go on and on and his family go on. So that's why he didn't want anybody to know he was going to die. But he didn't know exactly how he was going to die, but he had all these messages that were happening. And according to the chapter where he actually dies on September 11th, he was leaving the studio, and I guess John Lennon was doing a movie, this is 66 September, a movie in France, I think it was. So only uh, Paul McCartney and one other Beatles were in the studio, and the this was right after they finished the Revolver tour, and he says, okay, we're going to make a new new CD, our new album at the time, and we're going to just bam, bam, bam. I need you to do 10 songs. I need John to do 10 songs. But but uh, John Lennon and Paul McCartney always wrote together, but this time the producer was saying, no, you're going to write your songs, and John's going to write his songs. He's in, he's in another country right now doing this play. So you're going to start by yourself because they've always were a double team, and he, he was kind of frustrated by this. I've never written songs by myself. He, and uh, so he stormed out of the place, he slammed the door, and he left. And that was the night supposedly he died. I, I believe that's that's going from memory, so it's, I'm going to have to go back and reread it again. But anyway, on this night, supposedly he picked up a hitchhiker who was really hot. And uh, as a Beatles, he couldn't really go out on the street and meet girls because uh, he would... Uh, he would get mauled by people. All the Beatles would at that time, 66, because of the Beatlemania. So, but he picked up this really hot hitchhiker, supposedly, who was going uh, to wherever he was. Some he was he was going. She was going far away from her hometown area, but he kept checking her out the whole time, and she kept going. You're really the Beatles guy. So she was searching through the radio dials, trying to find a Beatles song. So she says, "Sing, sing," because she was still kind of like. Blown away that, wait a second, a Beatles is picking me up as a hitchhiker on the street? It's a, it was unbelievable to her, too. Um, well, this is all from piecing back the, what possibly happened, because no one knows exactly what happened, because they both were found dead. Um, supposedly, he went through a red light and a truck crashed into him, because he could, they believe because he was checking out this girl the whole time, and he was distracted by this hot girl in his car. So when they wrote the song... Uh, What's the song about? Oh, Wednesday morning at five o'clock as the day begins. That song, actually, hidden message of that song. I'll try to go into all the songs that have hidden messages. Almost every song after that had hidden message about the death. That song, supposedly, she's having fun. She's going away to have fun because this daughter from a nice family was leaving hitchhiking to go somewhere else because she was going to go have fun, but she left home because she never came back. She died. And they found out, they actually, they died September 11th, but they didn't verify the death of the body until after midnight of the next day, the, the uh, September 11th, September 12th. And so 5 o'clock at that time, what the song says, is when they actually contacted that family of the daughter who died, they identified her as the dead person. So there are some other messages in that song about the death, and every other song and every other album after that really goes into this. It's really a lot of information, so I can't really remember it all in one reading, so I'm going to have to go back and forth making videos on this. But I'm going to try to just look at some of the things I've uh, I've underlined. Let's see if there's anything I want to say about it. Uh, God, there's just so much. Okay, lovely Rita Mita made, made it also says has a lot of references to this scene. I also found some encodings in this that the guy didn't, didn't uh, find, which I think are really beautiful too. Uh, they, they make secret messages going down the page that you don't normally see unless you highlight them. Okay, I can't find all my notes. That's an area. So he says, Drive My Car has a bunch of secret references to this. Um, what other ones? He has a Masonic uh, checkmate picture that John drew, and he sold, he bought this from John Lennon. Can you see it? 
here we go you can see this one he bought this 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 version of it for an illegally grown plant he doesn't say what it is I'm assuming it's marijuana and a pie that he was gonna give to John anyway but John drew this hanging out of this house one day hanging out at actually Paul's house which this guy moved into Paul's house he was in collusion with the family um, Paul McCartney's brother became his good friend and helped him out getting used to being the new Paul McCartney so in this it has a lot of references to a lot of the songs and what they actually mean but uh, it shows it shows uh, the four bandmates playing a bass guitar which is the left guitar bass string um, there's also some other bass strings on the album I guess it's on the album cover uh, probably Sgt. Pepper where the bass the fourth one one of the strings is broken that's to show that also that the fourth member of the band is gone um, so in this there's love and on one of the albums and I forget which one it is now they're all trying to spell love I guess they're spelling love with their hands or something like that or they're doing hand signals but Paul McCartney is supposed to do the O but he's turned around doing it and I guess that's this picture supposedly I, I don't I have to reread this all because there's so much facts drilled into my brain but uh, there's so much symbolism to the Masonic uh, this guy apparently his uncle the reason he got into the Beatles and they found him is because his uncle was high up in the Masonic order and he was also a little lower level Masonic person so of course the Masonics Masons wanted to be uh, part of controlling the Beatles too and keeping them in control because there was a big risk that if Paul McCartney died that they would be either break up or their fame would be lost because sometimes you lose one member of a band the fame goes down the hill so there was many 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 reasons for not making it public although they made so many references to it in all their their albums after that and we'll get more into that in future videos I think that's all about I can remember right now I'm gonna just look through some of the chapters here envisioning okay so one of the chapters called playing with the bonzos was one of his bands before he got picked up uh, I was a session musician so he was a really good session musician he was much more talented musician than most of the Beatles were at the time and he really took their music to a higher level well let's see the one and only Billy Shear rams on okay I don't want to get into that chapter yet I'm going to talk about that later because it's, there's so much to talk about so on one of the the benefit of Mr. Kite being for the benefit of Mr. Kite it says late of Pablo and late of Pablo means the late Paul the dead Paul um, before before Peppers okay it talks about the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band album was the first album they actually put the lyrics in an album. It was never, no other band ever put lyrics in an album until Sgt. Pepper's and then everyone else copied after that. Uh, they actually put it, I believe, on the cover. And so he says, the reason we are doing that is to put our pictures behind the lyrics means we stand behind the lyrics, but we overdubbed the words we really wanted to use. So if you if you read the lyrics you can't hear the other overdubbing sound but if you know what he really was saying and you listen again you'll hear many words that he didn't they didn't say so it says nobody was really sure if he was from the house of lords if you listen to that again and you know it says the house of paul so um it's a reference to nobody was really sure if this guy billy shears was from the house of lords was from the house of paul because they said paul they also in fixing the hole uh, the whole message in fixing the hole was fixing the hole of the guy who died which was was Paul McCartney and in it he says uh, silly silly people standing there disagree and never win wonder why they don't get past my door but if you listen to it again he says silly Beatles so they overdubbed people and Beatles together so one year you'll hear a little Beatles and one year you'll hear a little but if you read the lyrics that's why they put the lyrics there so you're, conf you're confused in what you really heard because you're always going to believe what you actually read not what you actually heard 
um, that's a subconscious programming, but they at least were programming you to know the truth so when it finally does get out, you wouldn't be so shocked. So there's so many other uh, messages in all these songs. Okay, so... So he blew his mind out in a car. He didn't notice that the lights had changed. They say that's a reference to the fact that he ran a red light and he blew his mind out because he, he, uh, a car hit him and he, he actually got decapitated. Um, the only way they can identify him was they knew the car license plate because he was so, uh, just totally destroyed and the car actually caught on fire. So he was burned too, but he got decapitated. And uh, one other thing is Paul, the the real Paul McCartney was actually getting almost bald, and he would always put his hair down forward so you couldn't see that. But the new Paul McCartney wasn't. So that's just one of many things. You can tell it's not the same guy, according to this author. And I'm not yet taking a point of view on which is right, but there's so much revealing stuff in this book that it it's kind of hard to... Uh, Okay, so on one of the other albums it says OPD, which in just like in the U.S. it's a DOA, dead on arrival. They have to actually pronounce someone dead, and they call it officially pronounced dead, OPD. And I guess that's written somewhere on one of the uh, drum heads or something on the uh, Sergeant Pepper inside or outside. But the the OPD, officially pronounced dead, is also Another secret encoding, which we'll try to find it here. What was it? Ah, there's so many. Okay, I'm going to have to come back. I'm going to make more notes here, and I'm going to write more stuff. Come back with another video, and I'm going to try to print out some stuff of all these albums that they're talking about and all the lyrics. I got it all down. But anyway, I just wanted to recommend this book. If you're into conspiracy theories, this is a really cool one. Whether it's true or not, I don't know, but it sure seems pretty freaking amazing if it isn't true. Okay, I'll be back with you at this. Billy's back. Okay, read the book. Okay, I just finished the video, but I right after I finished, it's funny when you turn off the camera, you always remember things you wanted to say before you turn off the camera, so I'm going to just say them now. So one of the other chapters is Paul's Girls. So apparently Paul McCartney before dying got two different people pregnant. One was a, a girl from Germany, Erica Hubers. And another one was the girl who had the daughter named Michelle. Uh, I forget her name now, but anyway. So the song Michelle My Bell was after uh, the girl, Michelle, who was his daughter, turned five years old. The mother, who hadn't really been talking to uh, Paul McCartney for five years because he got her pregnant way back at the beginning of the Beatles at time when they were on tour, and he didn't really want anything to do with her. He was too busy with work, and he wasn't really in love with her. So he just got her pregnant accidentally. But anyway... He sent, she sent a picture of her, his daughter at five years old. So that's when he wrote the song, Michel, My Bell. And that's why he uh, put Solemon, or the, uh, I forget what the, the, the words are in uh, French, because this was a French girl and she would understand the meaning of the song. And he's, he's admitting with that song, My Bell, it's not a love song. Uh, that means it's my daughter, according to this author. Um... And the weird thing is uh, they did a, a legal settlement to pay a certain amount of money to this daughter and also the other daughter of the other mother, the French mother. No, that is that the other German mother. But uh, one of the mothers, I can't remember which one, after Paul McCartney got really, or the new Paul McCartney got super famous, the daughter, I guess, was grown up now and wanted because her dad didn't want anything to do with her, but he, she didn't know that he, her dad was already dead a long, long time ago, so she thought the new Paul McCartney was her dad. So she was wanting to have to see him, but he was didn't want anything to do with her because he said, you're not my daughter. But she got really 
upset because he had already agreed settlement to pay alimony to her for many years but she since he wasn't now saying you're not my daughter he, that made her say okay i want more money from you because you're now you're refusing to accept me as your daughter even though you already agreed a long long time ago to pay to pay alimony for me for my rest of my life so but at this time the paul mccartney's dead she doesn't know that her dad's dead um, but the but the writer of this book, supposedly Billy Shear, is the new father that is now the Paul McCartney you think is Paul McCartney, according to this book. And uh, he says, in court, he says, I'll do a DNA test to prove I'm not your father. So they did the DNA test, and sure enough, it comes out, it can't be my daughter. But So why this guy supposedly they thought was the other Paul McCartney, how could he have different DNA if he already agreed that he was the father in the previous lawsuit before 1966, before the other Paul McCartney died. So this was totally confusing to them. But finally, um, the mother saw a picture of the court case where they took a picture of him when they did the DNA test. And she says, wait a second, that's an imposter. So he couldn't say, yes, I'm an imposter, because that would be going against his uh, agreement in 1966 before... Paul McCartney died, that he would take over his role if he does die, and there would be no word ever said about it, unless it was said in, of course, a novel, which is, he's saying this is a novel, so you can say anything you want in a novel. He's not going to say it's true or not true, it's up to you to decide, and that's what I'm going to do too. So anyway, that was pretty interesting. So he said, they can say I'm an imposter, great. They can take me to court as many times as they want. I can, I can have as many witnesses, because this mother said, so if you're not you're saying this is not your daughter now but you before agreed that it was but it wasn't him it was the other paul agreed it was you're you're claiming that i had affairs with other people too while i was dating you and everybody knew that she was a very clean upright girl and she never slept with anyone else but paul mccartney during that three-year affair or two-year affair or whatever it was so she brought on all these witnesses to the court saying uh, they knew her very well. She never had another boyfriend. She never slept with another person during that time. So there's no way she could have got pregnant with anybody but him, not knowing that this new him wasn't him or the guy who died in 66, according to the book. So he, he says, well, I can get just as many witnesses to tell. You're saying I'm an imposter. Well, I can get as many witnesses as you can get witnesses that you're a clean girl, that I'm Paul McCartney, or at least the Paul McCartney that everyone thinks is Paul McCartney. He didn't go in, into that because he can't do that in court. He would be sued. Um, and he also, he, he would risk his whole, he had basically moved into the Paul McCartney house. He had basically taken up all the money from the from his uh, death settlement. Some of it was given to different family members to keep quiet and other people to keep quiet. Were given a, a lot of, at that time, Paul McCartney was super rich at 66. Um, he was only, the new Paul McCartney made much more money under the Paul McCartney's name, but he could never have made that money not being the Paul McCartney if he used his old name, which was Billy Shears in this band that wasn't even famous. So anyway, he knows he owes it all to Paul McCartney, so he kept the name Paul McCartney and stayed in the family Paul McCartney a lot of the money, even though he's not really a McCartney. And he says he's not even a really Billy Shear because that was also a stage name. So the funny thing is, there was an there was a really another Billy Shear who twenty years before Sergeant Pepper was released almost to the date, uh, supposedly died and said he would be back in twenty years, and that's when this Billy Shear shows up, as the one and only Billy Shear, Sergeant Pepper's only hearts go bad on the CD. Um, some of the other things that are on the Sergeant Pepper's album cover, there's so many references to a dead person in a car crash and you can find that for yourself I'll, I'll try to go more into it because i haven't looked at the album cover since reading this book i'm going to go into each piece because it gets really complicated and there's all these they use masonic symbols because there's the masonic use two symbols and they show that in the in the the one is the compass and one is the uh what is it called the right angle, which is a, a perfect right angle ruler. And so in the GM, in a lot of the, in the G is part of, there's always the the compass and the uh, the right angle ruler. So they, 
use those tools if you map out from the heart of the new Paul McCartney going from one side to another side of the record there's a reference from one character that's in the death scene to another character that's in this funeral scene and why they're connected together you have to use all these Masonic symbols to know that but anyway they what he says in this is basically even if you don't figure it out by reading the songs what the what the hidden messages are your subconscious mind already knows because just like you are attached already to the matrix field everything you know everything that's ever been known by anyone is already known by you um, I'll give an example I was uh, studying coordinated um, well, what's it called coordinated uh, remote viewing uh, which is giving you just a coordinate a coordinate which is a number so someone thinks of a, a coordinate like could be a uh, Eiffel Tower the data was built and they think of the date they think of the Eiffel Tower they think of the scene they don't even have to know much about it because as soon as they think of the scene you're already your brain is already downloading all the information and then they write a number and they put that in an envelope and they give it to another person the person gives it to all this class and they all this envelope they look at it they write down the number and say the number was 2564 it doesn't really matter what the number is because they whoever wrote the number was thinking of the scene when they wrote the number and in that number got encoded all the information of this scene whatever it is and they don't say what the scene is and everyone does the remote viewing and they all start coming up with a similar idea and they fi finally all realize it's the same scene but they get information that no one else knows because you can actually see into the past and into the future and in re remote viewing so what will happen is people write down this number, say it's 5572. So you write down 5572, if that's the number in the envelope. Right when you stop it, you let your pen just let go and kind of let go of your muscles, and it'll kind of go out to the side. Usually it'll make a squiggle. I'm going off the camera. But it'll make a squiggle from the number uh, off the page because you just let your, your, your arm naturally go, and it what's happening is all the information from that number encoded in that person's consciousness you're picking up is encoding in whatever this frequency of your line moving across will have all the information you need this is how crazy the conscious mind works and this was basically people working in the military industrial complex who did remote viewing to figure out why Russia had certain bombs and what kind of bombs they had and everything like that and it was done in both countries so later after you've done that you go into another scene where you put your pin on the line that you just drew and you start closing your eyes and you start doing these remote viewing sessions and they go they go through all these different phases it's a really long process so I won't go into that but just so you know your pin flowing off the screen which you don't even you're trying not to move your hand but the force of the consciousness is moving your hand like the Ouija board would do um, is basically encoding information in a squiggle of a pin so if, if, if the pen, pen squiggling can encode messages that will give you a picture of this scene that someone wrote on a number that they even thought about, if that can happen, if remote viewing is true, which I believe it is because I've studied it and I've, I've done it, um, then imagine what someone who writes a song who knows the secret message that you don't know, they write it, you listen to the song and you might not know why this this gives you some nostalgic feeling or something because there's secret messages in it but your subconscious mind knows everything that person knows who wrote the song so that's why they don't need to tell you all the things they tell you so he says uh, basically this was known to the Mace, the Masonic Order and all the other secret cabal government people so it says whenever one works whenever one work makes allusion to another the associative link works to connect us to the second work even if we do not consciously understand it all so in the, all the songs there's references to not only the death scene but there's also references to famous books famous plays that talk about the same exact car crash scene and even the the people that they put on the cover of the album were related to all the people in the front were all the dead people and they have wa a wax work of uh, Paul McCartney to say that he was dead and the whole the whole old band was dead in, in waxworks and the reason they they used waxwork is because of the song or actually the book they use a lot of references to Alice in Wonderland throughout all their writings after that time 
and even before that time. So you got to go back and read the actual book, Alice in Wonderland, and not the movie, because the movie doesn't always give you all the true information that the book does. But anyways, in that, uh, in the book, if I can find the quote, Mm, I might leave it for another video because I can't find it right now and I just lost my page because I my my dog ear I removed it when I was oh, here I'm somewhere over here I'll just leave this dog ear uh, I lost my place my dog ear okay anyway we'll get back to it in the next one but basically you know if you look at the album, you know all the subconscious meaning behind all the stuff, whether you really consciously know it. Your subconscious mind, which is your deep, true self that's all connected, knows everything. So that's why they can give you all this message if he, in fact, really did die. Slowly but surely, so you'll understand when you finally get the real story, if it is a real story. Uh, you won't be shocked because you already subconsciously know that it happened. Anyway, I'm just looking at forward reading to more and getting more into it. I'm going to go back and read the whole book and get more into the story and the real nitty-gritty on future videos. So stay tuned. Peace out.